So we're back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with another NBA video. Today we're going to be doing a tier list. We're going to be starting the series of ranking every position as we narrow down closer to the season. Now, with that being said, we're going to do all these videos with all the same different tiers. And we're going to narrow it down until we do the last one where we rank every single player that we have for point guards, shooting guards, small forwards, power forwards, centers, all on one list. And that's going to be the finale. If you do want all these videos, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. No more talking. Further ado, let's hop into it. Let's go! Now, I don't even know if I said what we ranking today. I, we're ranking PGs. We got to start it somewhere, and we're ranking PGs. Now, with that being said, point guards is a very, very interesting position. Um, now, one thing I do want to make sure to clarify. All these guys will only be on one of these tier lists. So, I had to figure out which guys was going to be point guards and all these guys are how i view point guards now if they don't play point guard on a team that doesn't really matter i'm not gonna lie i'm just ranking them in accordance to what position i think that they fit the best now today's basketball is kind of positionless that so the point guard and the assignments that they run and all that type of stuff doesn't really matter we're just ranking them in accordance to how good they are and that's just the position you know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. I'm just ranking them in accordance to how good they are, whether they're good at this position or not, or whatever. Whether you think they play this position or not, this is the group they're going to be in for this video. They're not going to be in no other positions. Simple as that. That's the best way I can explain it. Now, with that being said, uh, we got best. That's pretty much best in the world. Convos, top five is top five in the world. Convos, top ten, top ten in the world. Convos, top 25, top 25 in the world. Convos, all-star, all-star caliber player, high-level role player. Kind of self-explanatory, and then the rest. So, this is not just talking about best in the world convos for point guards. This is talking about all players. Only players that's going to be in the best in the world convos is going to be in the best in the world convos tier. So, yeah. It may not be people in best. It may not be people in top five for all of these positions. I just want that to be understood that this is what's going to be the tiers for every single position. Now, when you get that understood, let's keep it going. Now, uh, this isn't Trey Jones. This is Tyus Jones. I'll, I'll look, you be what when I remember one name, I always forget the other one. But Tyus Jones, he's on the Suns. He may end up being a high level role player because that's really what they need playmaking. But I'm gonna end up putting him rest because I don't think he actually fits what I deem a high level role player is. Now, Jaden Ivey is kind of tough. Jaden Ivey isn't a high level role player, but he also is an all star caliber. I would put him more so into empty stats, so I'm gonna have to put him in rest for now. I'm going to have to put him in rest. K Cunningham. K Cunningham, I think, is an all-star caliber player. I think that's where that's, that's like a perfect spot for him. James Booknight, I'm going to put you in the rest, but you at the back of rest. LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball is a very interesting one because he could be very good this year. He just has to stay healthy. I'm going to put LaMelo in all-star, but I'm not mad if somebody says that this year he could be top 25. Another thing I want to make sure before we go in too far, this is based off how good they're going to be this year. This has nothing to do with what they were last year, the years prior. This is just going to be me ranking how good they are going to be this year. This is just projections and stuff like that. Statistically and projections. This is just all that is. Really, it's just projections. Pretty much how good they're going to be this year. That's all I'm doing. Now, LaMelo, I think going to be all-star. It just comes down to health. If he can be any higher, I think he has the capability. If the Hornets are as good as some people are thinking, I don't know how good they're going to be. Um, I do like Brandon Miller a lot, but I know a lot of people don't like him as much as I do. But yeah, LaMelo, I think all-star. Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard is a high-level role player. One of the best backup point guards in the league. He has good shooting. Really underrated defense, and he gives the Celtics really, really good minutes in that backup point guard spot because these are the two guys that are PGs. Now, this was really tough because I didn't know how I wanted to put these two. I was going to end up putting both of them shooting guards because I feel like the way that they play is more so like the guard version of what a power forward is now in the NBA where they kind of have to do everything. They're super versatile. They're like versatile guards, and I kind of think of them as like what the – Real, what you really want at shooting guard, this is kind of what they are. Now, I know that the shooting guards is going to be more so scoring, but this is kind of like the mode of what the shooting guard to win championships you kind of want. So that's kind of why I was going to put them shooting guards. I was going to put Jalen Suggs in there, but then it was like kind of getting harder because I was looking at Alex Crusoe. He's kind of in that same mode, but Alex Crusoe is a point guard. 
But he could have still been shooting guard. So I could have low-key put all of them shooting guards, but I feel like because of their size, I'm going to just put them point guards. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it is positionless. But at the end of the day, um, these are the epitome of what high-level role players are. But it's kind of tough because they low-key are better than... You could, de you could debate if they're better than Cade. You could definitely debate it. I think K is going to be better this year, but you could definitely debate that they're better than K. But I'm going to put them in high-level role player. Now, the ranking of it, it can be anyway. I'm usually putting Derek White over Drew Holiday. But right now, today, I think I have more. Actually, no, I'm going to say Derek White. Um, to be honest, Drew Holiday, very important in the playoffs for the Celtics. I would argue more important to, for the Celtics after the first round than Derek White. Derek White was crazy in that first round against the Heat. He was solid after that, but I'll be honest, like, he was not as good as Drew Holiday. And even in Team USA, Drew Holiday was, he got more more leash, he got more leeway, he got, he just did a lot more for Team USA. So right now, today, I can see people saying Drew Holiday is better, but I think I do still trust Derek White more. So yeah. Uh, Markel Folks, is he a high-level role player? I would say no. I would put him over Tyus Jones, though. Cole Anthony. Hi, he can he can get points in bunches, but is he a high level role player? No, I would probably more so put him behind Jay Ivey. Then we have uh, um, Anthony Black. I think Anthony Black could be very good. I'm gonna put him behind Drew Holiday. I think he could be very good this year. He just need the minutes. I think Anthony Black could be very very good this year for the Magic. Um, then we got Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs is another very good player. I'm gonna put him behind Drew and. Derek White, but you could really argue he's up there, but I would say those two are better. I think you put the fact that they're going to have a bigger impact on winning this year because they're just on a better team. It's kind of tough to argue Jalen Suggs. I think he, nah, I don't know if he's even a better shooter than either, to be honest. I would probably, you can argue it, but I don't know if I'm going to waste my time on that. But yeah, Jalen Suggs, high-level role player. That's the epitome of what they are. Um, DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray is a tough one. I think on the Pelicans, he's going to be more so in this mold of the Derek Whites, the Drew Holidays, the Jalen Suggs. Like, I seen the uh, quote from Patrick Beverly where he says, I get what he was trying to say. He was trying to say that, like, there's always another superstar coming in terms of the LeBrons and stuff like that. Because when you look at how... Like, the superstars are the players that actually have impact. You know what I'm saying? Where, like, there's all these people coming into the draft that's coming. Like, you got, like, the Lucades, the Giannis's, the Wimby's that's coming into the draft. And they, like, getting even crazier in terms of how can the ev evolution of, like, I guess, KD's, Giannis can get. But he's saying that there's only so many Patrick, or he said there's only one. That was the wild part where he said there's there's another Braun and there's the only one Patrick Beverly and there's only one Draymond. I get what he's trying to say, but it's cap. It's cap. But yeah, this is kind of another guy that's like, the way I look at it is, I think it's a lot of guys that can play that Derek White, Drew Holiday, Jalen Suggs. It's just they don't buy in. I think DeJounte Murray is one of those guys that bought into it on the Spurs, but then that's kind of why he wanted to lead the Spurs because he wanted to be more. Then he goes to the Hawks, and then he stops playing defense, but he becomes a better offensive player, and people start to I think he still has that defense of the Spurs, and they start capping on him. But I do think if on the Pelicans, he can kind of mold the best of both worlds, in my opinion, where he's more of a playmaker on offense, but he's more of a defender on defense. I think that could be a very good combination to put him at high level role player. But for right now, to be safe, I'm gonna just put him right here. To be safe. Trey Young. Trey Young is an all-star caliber player. I would say if I'm being as fair and honest as possible, no bias. I'll put him at the top of all-star. I'll put him at the top of all-star. I personally think LaMelo could be better, especially when you think about the fact Trey just came off an of injury last year, just like LaMelo, but Trey wasn't as injured as LaMelo. But also, you think about the fact that the Hawks are finna have a, one of the better defensive teams around Trey that he's had with the pick with Dyson Daniels to replace um, DeJounte. That's a big defensive jump, if you don't know. Um, they got the number one pick in the draft, who's supposed to be a really, really good 3 and D guy, day one. 
They got some other guys that they got coming up, and I think that they could really be a, one of the better defensive units around Trey that he's played with in his career. Now, does that mean I still think that Trey is this inefficient or inefficient player, volume player? Yes. Yes, I do. And I would rather my PG to be high efficient with the least mistakes possible while still having a solid volume. You don't have to have as much of a volume as Trey, in my opinion. But, hey, and the undersized, the no defense, you got all that type of stuff, it all kind of compels. Now, you could really make these debates about the Trey Youngs, the Lamellos, the Ks against, like, the Derek Whites, the Drew Holidays, the Jalen Suggs, who would you rather? I probably would rather all three of those guys, even maybe DeJounte Murray, if you can buy in to play defense. But, with that being said, those guys have a bigger responsibility on their teams than those four guys are going to have. Um, TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell is literally the epitome of a high-level role player. In my opinion, he's the best backup point guard in the league. In my opinion. TJ McConnell was very good last year, but I expect him to be just as good as Dick last year. And I expect Tyrese Halliburton to be more healthy. But even when he's not... T.J. McCollum, he fits, he he steps up and plays that role. Exceptional. Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton is the first guy I'm going to put in top 25. Tyrese Halliburton, I think, is top 25. Um, I think he's a top 25 player stamped. Now, if you want to say Trey, Tyrese, I've said this for three years. I, I would rather have Tyrese Halliburton than Trey. If you rather have Ty- Trey than Tyrese, okay. Then that may put him in your top 25. He's not in my top 25. I have Tyrese Halliburton in top 25. But he's, like, on the edge. He's, like, on the edge for me right now. I'm not going to lie. Tyrese is definitely on the edge for me right now. Now, with that being said, Darius Garland. Darius Garland. Darius Garland is a harder one to rank because on the Cavs, he's not going to be an all-star caliber player. I think he could he could be the second best player in the Cavs. But Cavs fans don't seem to like him much. Stuff like that. So, I'm going to just put Darius Garland here for now. Um, I would probably put him more so here, but I'm going to put him here for now. Um, he's going to be a good playmaker, good shooter. Um, he's going to give them, he's going to give them some all-star caliber games for sure, but he's going to have a lot of stuff mixed in there and he's not a good defender, the size and all that. Um, he can, he's like the epitome of in between Trey Young and, and Tyrese in terms of what he gives you. Cause he doesn't have the volume of Trey Young, but he's not as efficient as Tyrese, if that makes sense. Or consistent, if that makes sense. Um, Damian Lillard. Dame. I still got Dame top 25. I will put Dame over Tyrese. Um, I think last year, it was it wasn't the best situation. Um, I know people don't want to hear this dead. It's like I'm being a dead horse. But... I was telling people that was going to be a match made in heaven. Giannis can now be off the ball a lot more. Giannis cannot play off ball. Giannis is going to be a great pick and roll player with one of the top five pick and roll guards in the league. Giannis cannot set screens. It really was like, honestly, the opposite of what I thought. Like, literally, it was a match made in hell. Like, these niggas do not fit together at all. But I do still think Dame is a top 25 player. I do think that based on all the stuff that's going on, I don't think it's going to get any better. They have Doc Rivers as the coach. They got Darvin Ham coming over here. I don't think it's going to get any better. I just think that Dame is a top 25 player. Simple as that. I just think that. Now, if you don't think he's a top 25, I'm not really fighting you on it because he's probably not going to play to the level of it because of the situation. But y'all give him that. And he's getting up in old age. I'm going to actually give Tyrese the uh, benefit of the doubt because of that. But I do think Dame is better than Tyrese, personally. Especially if you swap. Ooh, I ain't going to lie. Trey would probably, Tyrese would probably be better. For the Bucks, the name, because he's a better playmaker. But yeah, uh, let's keep it going. Io the Sumo. Io. Io is a high level role player. I would put Io behind Anthony Black. Actually, no. I'm chatting right there. Yeah, Io behind both of those. Behind both of those. Io is a really good role player though. Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso this year. Yeah, I'm going to actually put Derek right here, and I'm going to put Alex Caruso here. I think Alex Caruso is going to be pretty crazy on the Thunder. I don't think people understand how wild Alex Caruso is going to be this year. Like, he's going to be annoying. He's going to be he's gonna be very annoying. 
He's going to be annoying for a lot of important teams, too. So, yeah, Alex Cruz, I'm going to put a high-level role player. You could really argue he's the best high-level role player there, but I'm going to give Drew Holiday the benefit of the doubt. That's why I, I'm going to put him up there because I feel like I've seen it enough with him. I've seen it enough with him. I've seen him on multiple teams. And it's actually funny seeing how Bucks they always talk about his inefficiency. That's not what he's there to do. He's not there to score. That's just not what he's there to do. He can score, but he's not there to be the second main scorer of a team. That's just not what he's do. If you're asking him to do that, that's just not that's just not smart at all. But hey, shout out to the Bucks. Uh, K Kobe White. Now I do think the Bucks low key did lose this trade because he definitely fit the Bucks a lot better than Dame. But that's a topic for another day. Kobe White. Kobe White, I'm going to put it right behind Darius Garland. I'm going to put it right behind Darius Garland. I think Kobe White is going to have a really good year with the um, Bulls, but I don't know how much higher I can put him than that. Emmanuel Quickly is going to be very good this year. Now, Emmanuel Quickly is going to be tough because I think Emmanuel Quickly, I've said this multiple times, I think he's that next Harden, Shea, not going to be on that superstar level, but I think he's that next guy that got traded to a better situation where he can get more minutes. And he's going to explode. Now, is he going to be as good as Shea is? No. Is he going to be as good as Harden was? No. The only com the only real similarity is that he was in a situation where he wasn't getting enough minutes. And he's going to go to a better situation for his career. And that's going to make him be a much more celebrated player than he's been the past couple years. Pretty much. That's all I'm trying to say. Is he going to be a superstar? Probably not. But I think he's going to be much better. Now, where am I going to rank him on this? For now, I'm going to just put him here. Because I don't want to go too far, and I don't want to go too crazy, but that's why I'm going to put him. Scoot. It's going to be kind of tough if Scoot is not better than TJ McConnell next year. But that's a real thing. He may genuinely not be better than TJ McConnell. I, for for Scoot's sake, I'm going to put him here. But it's going to be kind of bad if he's not better than Peyton Pritchard and TJ McConnell. And that's a, real, that's a real possibility. I don't think people understand how good TJ McConnell and... Peyton Pritchard are, but that's a real possibility. Malcolm Brogdon, at this point in his career, I would say Malcolm Brogdon is here at this point in his career. And Fernie Simons. I like Anthony a lot. I like him a lot. I'll put him all state caliber, to be honest, because he definitely ain't a role player. He's not a role player. He can score with the best of them. I'm not going to lie. Anthony Simons can score. If he can do one thing, he can score that ball. And he can shoot that ball. It's just the consistency. I'm going to put him right there with Cade, though. I'm going to put him right there with Cade. Um, Jalen Bronson. Jalen Bronson is top 25. I'll put him right here, though. Like, he's closer to that top 10 than Halley is. But, yeah. I've been on that Jalen Bronson wave for a couple now, bro. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, it's kind of crazy seeing how people gassing him a little bit. I've seen some people say he's better than Curry. I've seen people say a lot of different things. But, yeah, I got Jalen Brunson top 25. Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, I think, is of the rest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put him as of the rest. I'm going to put him at the... Nah, he's not better than Jay Nivey. I'll put him there, though. He's not better than Jay Nivey. Actually, some of y'all boys got to come down. I'm looking at this. Some of y'all boys actually have to come down. Some of y'all boys actually have to come down. And then I'll put... No. I will put him there, actually. Yeah, Jay Nivey is kind of fucking this shit up. Jay Nivey is actually really good. It just... This don't fit him. I'm gonna put Jay Nivey... If Darius Garland is in the high-level role player, we're putting him up there. We're just going to put all them boys back up there. We're going to put, we're going to actually have Kyle Lowry as the top of the rest. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is another guy I would probably put in that top 25 category. I would put him behind Damon Halley, but he's closer to them dudes than people think. He is closer. Now, is he going to be as good as he was last year? I think maybe not because of the addition of Paul George, but I do think he is going to be the second option still. I don't think he's going to be that third option that people think. I think he's going to be the second option. I think he's going to be better than Paul George. I do. 
I do. I think Paul George is going to be more on, bet, I think he's going to be more so on that defensive side, but he's going to be like the third option on, on offense. And I think that's going to fit a lot better than what Ty, Tobias Harris is. I think Paul George is really going to be in that Tobias Harris role. And he's going to be much better in that role than Tobias Harris. And I think that's going to be a very, very, very good fit. It just, is Paul George going to be healthy? That's the only thing. I think Paul George really does fit really well. It's just, is he going to be healthy? Is Joel Embiid going to be healthy? I don't really understand why he went to the 76ers. Be, only because of the fit. The fit makes sense. That's the only reason I can understand it. But he just dealt with Kawhi for this many years. Just to go play with Embiid is kind of crazy. But shout out to bro. Um... Now we got Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson is a spark plug. I'm going to put him right here with the best of them, Cole Anthony. Um, Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is one of the better role players. I would probably have to put him. I would probably have to put him like here. Put him like there. I like that for him. Um, John Morant. John Morant is top 25. I'll put Ja above Halley. I think people are forgetting about Ja, but I'm going to put him behind Jalen Bronson. I think Bronson has done... The closest to the top three that any of these guards have ever done. Trey, you could argue 2021 is up there too. But I don't think he was as good as he was in the playoffs for that whole season. Now, he had seasons where he was better than he was in 2021 regular season. But he didn't do it in the playoffs like he did in 2021. Jalen Brunson put up together a really good playoffs and a really good regular season two years now. Now, he was more inconsistent in the playoffs last year. And I think people think he was better in the playoffs last year than he was the year before. I think he was more consistent the year before. But he did have a stretch of games where he's good, but he also had a bad stretch of games where he's bad on both sides of the spectrum. So it really depends on how you want to look at it. But I do still think Jalen Bronson, out of all these guys under the big three, he probably would have to be the best point guard in the league after the big three. Actually, may have to scratch that. But let's keep it going. Ben Simmons. Um, I need Ben Simmons to play. I'm going to put him at the back of the whole high level role play because that's the epitome of what he is, but he has to play. Is he even a point guard at this point? I don't think they're going to play him there, but I still will forever look at him as a point guard, so I don't care. Um, Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. is a really good defender. I'm going to put him I'm gonna put him here. I think he's a really good role player. Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder is definitely a high level role player. I'm going to put him right there with Malcolm Brogdon. Mike Conley. Mike Conley is another guy that's a high-level role player. I'm going to put him right there in front of Malcolm Brogdon. Kaysan Wallace. Now, Kaysan Wallace is a really good player. Really good defender. Really good shooter. I'm going to actually put Kaysan Wallace right here. I think Kaysan Wallace is going to be way better his second year. That, bro, the Thunder have a lot of guys that can take a jump. <laughs> like, bro. The Thunder is really, really wild. I don't know what they're doing over there, man. They're building some really crazy shit over there. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It, it just is what it is. Um, Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy, I think, bro, this is the thing. Josh Giddy is really slept on. I think that was a really good trade for both sides because the Thunder got a guy that's going to fit perfectly. And they traded a guy that fit awfully. So it looks like a very uneven trade. But Caruso fit really well on the Bulls. Don't get it wrong. But I think the way the direction of the Bulls are going, they're going to need a guy like Josh Giddy to handle offense for a couple years. Now, is Josh Giddy good enough to be that guy for the future? We don't know. But I think he's going to be a lot better on the Bulls than he was on the Thunder. Now, is it a little bit, is it, is Caruso helping the Thunder more so than Josh Giddy is helping the Bulls? Most likely. I mean, I would, I would bet money on it. But, um... Josh Giddy is going to be much better on the Bulls than he was. You got to think about it. They're going to have Josh Giddy, Matus. They're going to have Kobe White, and they're going to have Lonzo, who I don't have on here because we haven't seen bro in like three years. But I do think that Lonzo in the fast break with Josh Giddy and Matus is going to be really nice. All three of those guys are very versatile guys that can play on and off the ball in a, and want to play fast. And I think that's going to fit really well together. And Kobe White is going to be probably the guy that's going to try to score the most out of all of those guys. Or Matis. It's going to be one of them. They both going to get shots up. I'm not going to lie. But um, I would trust Kobe White more so than Matis because Matis wasn't even efficient in the G League. He wasn't efficient in the Summer League. I wouldn't expect a crazy efficiency in the NBA. Um, but Josh Giddy, I would probably have to put... I would probably have to put here. I would probably have to put here. He's just a really well-rounded player. Actually, I'd probably have to put him there. I think Quickly is a much better defender, but... There's a lot of things that Giddy does better than Quickly. Like, Quickly's a better shooter. 
better defender, better scorer, but everything else I would say Giddy's better at. Like rebounding, passing, like is that everything else? Uh let's keep it going. Shay, come on now. This is the first weird one that I don't really know how I want to rank it because I've said this. I think though it's four guys that could really be in that debate for best player in the world. But I ain't gonna lie, we're projecting. And especially as good as OKC, I'm expecting him to be. I think that's going to be in large part due to Shea. Shea is a guy that definitely could be in that best player in the world convo, bro. I'm not going to lie. I already say he's top five. I've been saying that for like since. I don't know how long. I've been saying that for a good little while, though. Like going into last year, I said he's going to be top 10 easy. He was top 10. Not debatable. He was top five. He could for sure be debatably the best player in the world. Because the way I look at it is, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. We bring up the other guy. I'm going to put him up there in best. Um, Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels, I think, is a high-level role player. I'm going to put him. I'm going to put Dyson Daniels right there with Anthony Black. I'm going to put him right there with Anthony Black, to be honest. Dyson Daniels is probably better, but I I'm hoping for a jump for Anthony Black. So I I'll put I'll put Dyson Daniels there. I'll put him there. To be honest. I may even have him over Marcus Smart, but I'm gonna just be safe and put him there. Kyrie Irving. Now Kyrie Irving is another one that's kinda tough to rank because Kyrie is very, very good on the Mavs. He wasn't very good in the in the finals. But that I'm telling people about if you have a small guard, get as far as possible far as you can get from the Celtics the Celtics are going to be the team that's going to kill the small guard if you have a small guard six foot three and under I'm telling you right now that is the team that could abolish the small guard it's already guards are getting taller than ever the Celtics may go on a run that completely take the small guard out of the NBA for a good we already got the Wimby evolution coming into the league I'm telling y'all bro that small guard shit may be done, maybe reps. But if they can find a way to avoid, Kyrie can be very, very nice. But with that being said, I probably have to put Kyrie. Okay, he's better than Maxi. He gonna be better than Dame most likely too. If he fits better, cause Dame and Kyrie are very close. Is he better than Halley? That's where it gets tough. I think Kyrie's a better defender for sure. Better scorer for sure. Halley's a better playmaker. Yeah, I would probably go Kyrie. I'd probably go Kyrie. That's why I would have to stop, though. That's why I would have to stop. Because Kyrie is the one that's just not better than Ja. It's just what it is. He's not better. If he's the main player that things got to focus on, he's not better than Ja. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. He's not a... Right, the score is actually debatable, but all right. Now we got Luca. Now, this is what I was saying earlier. Now, Luca is definitely in the best player in the world combos. He's one of those four. It's not even debatable. If you don't think Luca's in the best player in the world combos, nigga, get new eyes. Stop watching basketball. Watch harder. I don't know what to tell you. Luca's in the best player in the world combos. Now, offensively, Luca clears Shea. I'm not even doing this. Um, as a scorer, does he clear Shea? No. It's debatable. I think that's debatable. The score part, but the offensive cat. Nah, it's not close. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's not close. What Luka can do as a playmaker is just leaps and bounds better. Now, why I don't think scoring is clear like the offense is because Luka's shot IQ is so bad. And Shea probably has one of the best shot diets in NBA history. Not just in the league today, in NBA history. He drives more than anybody. He's dominant in the mid-range. And when he needs to shoot threes, he can still shoot threes. And he just doesn't shoot them. 10 times a game. Bro, Shea has a crazy good shot diet. Now, alongside that, he's a good playmaker. Is he the level of Luka? Hell no. No, he's not. But the reason why Shea can get in these talks is going to be on defense. We seen how people was talking about Luka allowed the most blow bys. That They was coming up with stats to make to make sure they can get they, they Luka this tracks off. I don't know. But, Shea is not a bad defender. On ball, he's more of like a he's more like a 2K lock where like he just spamming X all the time. He's not really 
trying to stay in front of his guy more so than he's trying to take the ball off somebody, rip somebody. But off ball, he's one of the best off ball guards in the league. He's a great backside rim protector. He's a good passing lane guy. He can he can do a lot more off the ball than he can do on the ball. So I do like that for Shea, especially as a help side guy. He's one of the best help side guards in the league. But yeah, he's just much better as a defender than than Luca. Luca when he's when he's healthy and paying attention, he can get stops. I just think Shea is much better. He clears him. He would he definitely clears him. Now when Luca is unhealthy and he's not he's he's tired as bad. It can get very bad. That's not something you really have to worry so much with Shea. So I think that those convos are gonna get real this year for Shea. That he can be in those convos. Because if Luca's in those convos, Shea can definitely get in those convos. Cause it's gonna be very interesting convos between them two this year. If Shea has this type of season he's going to have and the type of season his team is going to have. So I'm very interested and excited to see how this is going to look. But, yeah, Davion Mitchell, very good defender. Not much else you're getting out of him. I'm going to just put him at the rest, um, to be honest. He's not much of a high-level role player because he's not doing anything else but playing great defense. But I'll give him that. He does play great defense. De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox is a very tough one. Um, I told people the shooting was going to come down. He was not going to shoot that crazy for three the whole season. But he is a solid mid-range with the, one of the faster players in the league. Um, defensively, out of all the guards in top 25, he probably is the best. I would probably say Kyrie is the best, but De'Aaron Fox has more size. So he can guard more people than Kyrie. But with that being said... I would probably have to put Fox here. I'll probably have to put Fox here. I would probably have to put Fox there. It's a lot of point guards in top 25. I don't know if I believe all these dudes are top 25. Let me calm this down. Let me calm this down. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Um, Jalen Green. No. I saw bro Jalen Green. Amanda Thompson. I like Amanda Thompson a lot. Athletic freak. Six foot seven. Ridiculous rebounder. Ridiculous defender. Um can't score. Can't shoot. But everything else besides shooting, scoring, he's gonna be really, really good. He's gonna set screens. He's gonna he's a really high IQ player. Amanda Thompson's gonna be really nice. The only thing I have an issue with is who's gonna play. <laughs> Cause they got Van Vliet. They got Emmett Thompson. They got Jalen Green, and they just picked Reed Shepard, who looked really good in the summer league and looked really good in college. So it's going to be kind of interesting there. But I think Emmett Thompson can be... I think Emmett Thompson can be at the top. I'm going to be completely honest. Being completely honest, I think he could genuinely be at the top. Now, if we put into the fact that he's not a good shooter, then you can start to try to bring it down. But out of all these guys, he would be the best... Okay, him or Jalen Suggs would probably be the best defender. Him, Jalen Suggs, and Crusoe. It would be between them three. It would be between them three. You could throw Drew and Derek White in there, but I would take Jalen Suggs and Crusoe over those two, personally. I think that those two provide more offensively as a whole than Caruso and Jalen Suggs. But I think Edmund Thompson clears all of those guys as a playmaker. I think he has more IQ. That may be crazy to say for veterans like Drew Holiday, but I, I do think that it's true. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'll get Drew the uh, edge, but I'm going to put Avon Thompson over at Caruso. I'm not going to even cap or hold you. Um, then we got CP3s. CP3s, I'm going to put at the top of rest because, like, CP3 getting up there. I think he's going to be solid for Wimby, though. But I don't. if you're expecting him to, like, take the Spurs to the playoffs, that's kind of unfair to CP3. I think that would be more so on like guys like Vassell, Wimby, Keldon Johnson, um, what's the bro name, Sochan, and the new draft pick they got this year that we're going to talk about in this video. Stephen Curry. Now, Stephen Curry is the one that's another debate because he could, I know for a lot of people, he's going to be top five, top ten. I'm going to put him top ten, but I'm going to be honest. Like If I had to really break down all the players I think are better, I would probably have him on the outside looking in. Um, I think Curry really showed real regression last year. I think he did, personally. Um, and I don't think it's going to get much easier this year without Clay. Now, I do think that the team is going to be better. But is it going to be easier for Curry? I don't know. Because 
I don't think people understand how respect works in the league. Like, yeah, they picked up Buddy Hill, but Buddy Hill does not get nowhere near the level of respect that Klay Thompson gets. The only reason Klay Thompson is, like, not good for the Warriors and is going to improve the Warriors that he's not on the team is because Klay takes some of the worst shots and he regressed as a defender. But he still got respected as Klay Thompson when you played the Warriors. You weren't leaving Klay open. A lot of the guys that they picked up, they're going to leave open. Buddy Hill's going, he's only going to shoot open. He's not going to shoot anything. The 76ers learned real quick on that. He's not going to shoot anything open if it's not open. It's just simple as that. Um, I think guys like Moses Moody could get good minutes for them, just like Kaminga. Hopefully he does. He's a very good player. He should get the minutes. Um, Brandon, they expecting B-Pods to be... Actually? I tried to see if I had B pods. I didn't have B pods. B pods would probably be a high level role player. So people that care. But for Curry, more on Curry. Um, yeah, I just think they're gonna be smaller. And I don't think people understand that they're gonna be smaller. Um, I think Curry's gonna get more attention than ever. It's gonna be kind of similar to 2021, but he has a better team, if that makes sense. He has a much better team than he had 2021. It's gonna be much better than that for the team, but for him. I think it's going to be tough because he's not as good as he was in 2021. 2021, you could argue, was Curry's peak. He was ridiculous. But right now, I'm not going to lie. Last year, I did see regression. Um, I don't think people understand why Curry has these off games in the playoffs when he does. It's because of his he shoots threes. It's the When you look at his full season and full playoffs numbers, it looks good. But he's going to – it's the same reason why he doesn't have – it took him so long to get a Finals MVP because he's going to have that one game. He's going to have that one series. He's going to have that stretch. He's going to have that stretch always in the regular season where it's late December, early January. He's going to be struggling. And it's just what it is. Um, I don't know if I must see Curry as a top 10 player after this year because you're going to have Luka, Shea, Embiid, Jokic, Giannis. Those are five. Then you got the guys like Braun. You got AD. You got Tatum. Then that's where it gets like, the debatable guys like KD, Curry, and that's why I would probably have Curry in there. Because off the dome, those are the 10 I'm thinking of. But it may be somebody I forgot. And if I forgot, bro, for, I'm my bad. But I really do feel like I forgot somebody. But, yeah, Curry definitely top 10 for now if I'm projecting. Some people even think Jalen Bronson top 10. So, I if it's between Jalen Bronson and Curry, I got Curry. Let's get that straight. I got Kurt. I don't even think, I don't even think Jalen Bronson 11 12. So that's just what it is. But yeah. Russell Westbrook, high level role player. Where would we put Russell Westbrook though? <sighs> Russell Westbrook is similar to like an Eamon Thompson, but without the. Okay, this is one thing people get confused defense. When people see. Russ have good games on ball. People kind of like, it's, they do the same thing with Braun. Like, when you see people off ball, like, they don't really even put into the point of lapses off ball. Like, the the awareness. All, off ball awareness is a big deal. I think LeBron has a high off ball awareness, but he has so many lapses because of effort or just not paying attention, just genuinely not paying attention to his man. Like, it can kill his defensive contributions. Similar to Russell Westbrook. But Russell Westbrook, when he is on ball, it just depends on how the Nuggets are going to use him. Is they going, Are they going to use him more so on ball than off ball? I think that would suit him better, personally. Because when he's on ball, the past couple years with the Clippers, I think he's been solid, to be honest. I think he, he just had some really, really good games with the Clippers on ball. But he has had some of those things where he can kind of get caught lacking, you know what I'm saying? And then we all know how Russ is as a shooter on offense. He can get really sporadic and really, really crazy with his decision-making. But I think the Nuggets may be the perfect team remaining or the last team remaining that could really get this to work for Russell Westbrook. If he's going to be a role player, this could be the team that really could get it to work. Where first unit, Jokic is that guy. Second unit, Russ is going to be like that do-it-all guy that they need him to be now the only thing i would say about the nuggets in the playoffs in the playoffs that second unit is really ran by jamal murray and eric gordon that's where it's gonna be a little bit interesting so i don't know how much they're gonna do that in the, in the regular season 
I'll be very interested. But yeah, if people, if you're one of those people that think he's gonna replace KCP, shout out to you, bro. You're stupid. It's simple as that. But yeah, uh, Russell Westbrook, I would probably have to put, bro. He's not better than. Okay, the Mike Conley thing. I think Mike Conley fit on more teams because of his shooting. So I'll put Mike Conley. I'll put him. I'll put Mike Conley there because he fits on more teams because of the shooting. Um, James Harden. I would probably have to say James Harden is here, but James Harden is really good. He can give you a really good game. But yeah, I'll probably put him more so there, to be honest. I think Maxi, Trey, Lamelo. You would, you should expect more out of those guys at this point than James Harden. If you were expecting that out of James Harden, like every night, that's just unfair, to bro. To be honest, at this point, I'm not one of them people that's like a James Harden hater that's gonna hold him to a standard that he's just not capable to. That's just unfair to him, in my opinion. Now, if I'm low barring him, then. Hey, that's me low barring him, but I'd rather low bar somebody and hold somebody than hold somebody to an expectation that they're not capable of reaching, if that makes sense. Um, and I do think that James Harden can give you a game or two, but he can't really be a very consistent guy all 82 games for a full series, in my opinion. In my opinion. Gabe Vincent. I'll put Gabe Vincent right here. Switzer Dinwiddie. Spencer didn't, but he was like right here. D'Lo. D'Lo was shooting really good last year. I would probably put D'Lo more so like like there. Yeah, I'd probably put him more so like there because TJ and um, Pritchard are just, they clear bro as a defender. Clear him. Just completely clear him. But I would say D'Lo He's not better to playmaker than TJ McConnell, but his playmaking and shooting ability is better than TJ McConnell. But I don't know who would actually be a better. I'd probably say D'Lo better score than TJ McConnell. I would just rather TJ McConnell than D'Lo. I rather Peyton Bridger than D'Lo is a bigger combo than me. Um, but that's a little different. That's a little different. That's a tougher one. Um, Pat M- Patty Mills. I would probably put Patty Mills back here, bro. Yeah, he's just too small. It's just too small for modern NBA. Just say what it is. DeLon Wright, very good defender. Outside of defense, he's not doing much. I'll put him, like, here. Very good defender, though. I think he's going to be very good for the Bucs because the Bucs need defense bad. If he plays. But he's a very good defender. He can take it off you. He can lock you down. DeLon Wright is a very good defender. Um, Terry Rozier plays for the Heat. Terry Rozier is not very good. Um, the, efficient, the, the epitome of... High volume, low efficiency. He's always been that. Um, I hoped on the he he would calm down on the volume, but while calming down on the volume, he would raise his defense. Neither happened. You know what I'm saying? Like he calmed down on the volume, but he still it was like the volume and efficiency like still was on the same level. If if you so say for instance, if somebody's shooting like ten times, ten threes. But this guy's shooting 38% for three. But then you have a... Okay, that's not a good one. Because that's that's efficient. Okay, let me think of another one. Okay, if, a, if you have a guy that's shooting 10 threes, but he's shooting 33% for three. But then that same guy goes to another team, but he gets less shots, so now he's only shooting five or six threes. But now he's shooting 35% for three. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. He's pretty much doing the same thing, just on a lower scale. Pretty much. Because like that 33% is more valuable... On 10 threes because you can understand why the volume would affect his efficiency. But still being inefficient on a lower scale, it's, it's, it's still doing the same thing. Like, you're efficient, you're inefficient, you're just not as bad in terms of how much you throwing up. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. Somebody made sense. I don't know. Um, He's somewhere around this Kobe White, Marcus Mart range. I'm not going to lie. As a Heat fan, I would rather dump Dyson Daniels. I would rather... Anthony Black. All right, rather teach him McConnell. I'm going to give him Peyton Bridger, though. That's just a little too disrespectful. I ain't going to lie. That's a little too disrespectful. I can't even hold you on that one. That may be too far. Peyton Bridger, that may be a little too far. Um, Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard. I think Reed Shepard going to be really good. 
Um, I'm gonna do it kind of for all the rookies. I'm gonna kind of do it similar to how I did it for the top 25, under 25, not top 25, but the top players under 25. I'm gonna just put them close to guys that they can play similar to, that they can kind of be around the scale of as a rookie. So let's do it. So Reed Shepard, who's a guy Reed Shepard could be similar to as a rookie. As a rookie, by the way. I think Reed Shepard and Emmanuel Quickly is very... That's a very good one. That's a very good one. I ain't gonna lie. Reed Shepard, he got real good comfortability on the ball. You know what I'm saying? Re actually, really underrated. D I ain't gonna lie. Reed Shepard, Emmanuel Quickly, that's not a bad start. Okay. Steven Castle. Steven Castle. Stephon Castle, Steven Castle. I want to say DeJounte Murray, but I want to say more so Spurs DeJounte Murray. So I'm going to actually put him next to Derek White, which is another guy that came from the Spurs. But actually, he probably is more so Dyson Daniels and Anthony Black, to be honest. Yeah. Rob, Terry Rozier. That's just the easy one. I'm not going to lie. It's a very easy one. For now. as This is just them as rookies. It's not their full career projections. Um, Bob Carrington. To be honest, to be honest, I see two people, like two people come to my mind instantly. I'm trying to make sure I'm not tripping on it because there are some other guys in this tier. But yeah, I think Bob could be D'Lo or he could be a dentist. One of these. I'm not mad at either one of these. I'm going to say D'Lo more so than Dennis, though. Jared McCain. Tyler Kolick and uh, TJ McConnell is like, that's like perfect. I'm not even going to lie to you. Tyler Kolick and TJ McConnell is like perfect. He's not as good of a defender, but offensively, he reminds me a lot of TJ McConnell. Like, he reminds me a lot of TJ McConnell. Jared McCain, though, that's a tougher one. Jeremy Kane, that's a very tough one. I'm going to actually say Peyton Pritchard, to be honest. Peyton Pritchard or Kobe White would be a very good one. But I don't want to do Emmanuel quickly for him, too. But he's not as good of a defender as Reed, so I'm going to just keep it there for now. Bronny. People are going to say it's a diss. Um... I'm going to say for Bronny, I'm going to say Gabe, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to say Gabe Vincent. I'm going to say Gabe Vincent. I think that's a solid little bar. He's a second round pick. That's not, not trying to give bro too crazy expectations, but I think that's a, a good expectation for him to be like a Gabe Vincent. So yeah, that's my point guard tier list. Um, the rookies are just expectations for them to look as a rookie. Are they going to be as good as these guys? No. It's just like in terms of similarities. You know what I'm saying? That would be like a comp for them as a Ricky in terms of... That's not their comps for their career. Are they perfect comps? I don't think Reed Shepard's comp is really even, like, remotely close. I think it's just, like, their skill sets is similar. It's just, like, they don't play the same, if that makes sense. Because um, Reed Shepard is sneaky. Like, sneaky athlete, sneaky shooter, sneaky all around. But, yeah, that's my that's going to be my little tier list for the PGs. Y'all do want more, like the video. Y'all won't, you know what I'm saying, subscribe. Turn on notifications. Share this video to anybody that will help or enjoy. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. I'm out of here, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!